Thank you. Friday the 13th of November 2015 started as any other day, but by the end of that day, the city of Paris, France, and the world was in a state of shock due to the horrific attacks perpetrated by ISIS terrorists on the people of that city. By the end of that day, 130 people lay dead and 350 plus were injured. To my family, this hit home in a very direct way. My wife, Nanette, grew up in Paris in the early 1980s, while her father was stationed there as a member of the US State Department. She attended the American School of Paris with other diplomat and military children. Unfortunately, attacks are not new to Paris. During her time there, she experienced many attacks. The detonation of a bomb in her school as a protest when President Reagan visited the city. An assassination of the parent of one of her classmates, and the hostage taking of other parents she knew during the Iranian hostage crisis who had previously served in Paris. She recounted to me how explosions and these attacks are a regular part of life in Paris. So when these most recent attacks occurred, it was a literal form of post-traumatic stress disorder for my family seeing the tragedy unfold in a city we hold very, very dear. Thank you for allowing me to speak about this terrible attack and to speak for those victims. I struggled with what to say to honor the people who have been lost and the families that must go on without them. More specifically, I struggled to understand why this attack had the impact it has around the world. After all, just two days earlier, Beirut was attacked, and two weeks before that, an airplane was destroyed all by ISIS. These are but a few of the attacks in 2015. However, to me, and I think to the world, Paris was something different. I believe it's because of what Paris represents to the world. Other great world cities may represent many things, business, finance, trade, but Paris is the heart of culture, the center of all those things that represent what civilization strives to be, art, theater, architecture, cuisine, fashion, literature. It is the literal incarnation of creativity. And so I'm reminded of a quote by President John Adams. He said, I must study politics and war that my sons may have the liberty to study mathematics and philosophy. My sons ought to study mathematics and philosophy in order to give their children a right to study painting, poetry, music, and architecture. Isn't that exactly what Paris represents? That which we aspire to allow our children to become? So to attack Paris is to attack that which is best in our world, best at what we can aspire to. And I believe that's exactly what those terrorists intended, to attack the values we hold dear, to attack the virtues of the civilized world, because they are anything but civilized. So in the coming days, the world will deal with this evil. However, that's not my point today. For while we go on, while Paris will certainly rise from this tragedy, those victims will not. Their days ended on November 13, 2015. They left unfinished all their goals, their dreams. They left their families and friends to suffer their loss for the rest of their lives, and they deserve to be remembered. I took the opportunity to read about all the victims, to honor them by learning a little bit about them, and while it's beyond the scope of this moment to talk about them all, I want to recount one of them to honor all of them. A woman named Helene Moyal was 35 years old and a Parisian. She was a makeup artist, she was a wife, and she was the mother to a 17-month-old son. She died at the Bataclan music concert. Her husband, Antoine Laris, wrote to the terrorists days after they killed his wife, and his words are so strong and true, I use them here. He said, you will not have my hatred. On Friday evening, you stole the life of an exceptional person, the love of my life, the mother of my son, but you will not have my hatred. I don't know who you are, and I don't want to know. You are dead souls. So no, I will not give you the satisfaction of hating you. You want it, but to respond to hatred with anger would be to give in to the same ignorance that made you what you are. Of course, I am devastated with grief. I will grant you that small victory, but it will be short-lived. 
I know that my wife will be with us every day and we will find each other in heaven with free souls which you will never have. You would like me to be scared, for me to look at my fellow citizens with a suspicious eye, for me to sacrifice my liberty for my security. You have lost. Those are amazing words for someone so wronged. I believe Antoine is correct. They have lost. Antoine's view will prevail. Civilization will be prevail. But we must still properly mourn the dead. Mr. Speaker, on behalf of the victims of the Paris attacks, the families that continue to suffer from their loss, and for all victims of terror, terror no matter where they occurred, I would respectfully ask for a moment of silence in their honor. Thank you. Body will take a moment of silence. 